Are Minecraft Slime Balls Sentient? In Minecraft, damaging a slime enough will split it into smaller fractions. Killing a big slime creates two to four medium slimes. Killing one of them creates two to four small slimes, and killing one of them drops up to two slime balls, or up to five with a max level looting sword. Now, are these slime balls just inanimate remains, or are they the next step down in a sentient being's size? And if Minecraft slime balls are conscious living beings, then is it immoral to use them to craft slime blocks and sticky pistons? One argument that you might think of against the slime balls' sentience is experience orbs. When you kill something in Minecraft, it drops experience orbs. Some players consider this to be the soul, so you could argue that when you kill a small slime and it drops experience orbs, that means it is dead. However, as all three sizes of slime drop experience before splitting into smaller creatures that are widely accepted as sentient, I don't think this point has any relevance. If it was only the small slimes that dropped experience, I would consider it more seriously, but as it is, there is no reason to think that the splitting of a medium slime into a small slime and dropping experience is any difference from the splitting of a small slime into a slime ball and dropping experience. It's also worth noting that the smallest size of slime loses the ability to damage its enemies due to its loss of mass. It is entirely plausible that the next step down in size could lose its ability of self-locomotion, especially considering that slimes do not walk or slide, but instead stretch and bounce themselves to move, a type of motion that requires mass. So the fact that a slime ball cannot move on its own does not eliminate them from being the fourth stage of a conscious being. That is, given that slimes are sentient in their larger forms. So how do we prove that slime balls are conscious and sentient? As sentient as, say, a chicken or a pig. Or that the larger forms of slime are? Well, that's a very difficult question. It's similar to one posed by philosopher Thomas Nagel in his 1974 article, What Is It Like To Be A Bat? In the paper, Nagel defines consciousness as the collection of experiences an organism has. That is, an entity is conscious if and only if there is something that it is like to be that entity. There is something that it is like to be human, so we are conscious. But we can never know what it's like to be something else. Even if we turned our habits nocturnal and hung upside down to sleep, we would never know what it's like to be a bat. It's not something we can prove, because we cannot prove something else's experiences one way or the other. By Nagel's definition of consciousness, it is purely and wholly subjective, and therefore we cannot look at anything objective to prove it. But I, for one, believe that large slimes are conscious. Do they not identify players and iron golems as enemies to attack while ignoring other entities? Does it not make a noise when hurt? Does it not direct its jumping towards its goals? I think that if you take chickens and pigs as conscious, you must take slimes to be conscious as well, even if we cannot prove it. Now we must ask the same question about slime balls. There is, as before, no way of concretely proving that Minecraft slime balls are conscious. However, not only is there no way to disprove it, but there is actually no reason or grounds upon which to believe that they are not, based on what we already know. Ask yourself, why would you consider them to be inanimate remains? It's already verified that the splitting of slimes into new but still conscious beings still creates experience orbs as well as that slimes lose characteristics as their mass reduces. There's even already a precedent for being able to carry living beings in your inventory. There is nothing, not one single thing, that would suggest Minecraft slime balls are not the next logical step in a slime's division. It's worth considering that as slimes divide, their eyes multiply. A two-eyed, one-mouthed large slime divides into several medium slimes, each with two eyes and one mouth, for example. Therefore, as the slime splits apart, it makes sense to assume that new, appropriately sized organs generate from the living slime substance as well. In much the same way as cells split by mitosis end up with the same organelles as the original cell. Whatever equates to a slime's brain and nervous system would therefore be remade with each smaller size as well. 
and we should expect it to do the same when a small slime is split into pieces. In fact, considering this trait of automatically creating appropriate organs for existing as it breaks apart, there's no reason to suspect that slimes are even capable of death. Slime blocks not being able to move is also no reason to disbelieve this point, by the way. If you stuck nine humans together, they also wouldn't become one big dude. Or if you stuck nine big slimes together, they don't recombine. And as this is nine slimes who have, with their loss of mass, lost the ability of self-propulsion, it only makes sense that the slime block cannot move on its own either. It's nine little fellas being pulled on by gravity, and they're all sticky enough to stay together. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so there's a chance that Minecraft slime balls are living, sentient creatures. But where do the questions of morality come into it? Well, for that, there's something we have to do first. Yes. Yes, it is. Minecraft mobs feel pain, and this is verifiable in a few different ways. The simplest is to look at animals like cows and pigs, which flee when harmed. There are creatures in Minecraft who have evolved in such a way that they know to escape and avoid damage. When their body is harmed, their brain tells them to remove themselves from the situation, like the reflex to pull your hand away from a hot stove. The most simple way for this to be done would be through an unpleasant impulse to prompt escape from the damaging situation. Your body gets harmed, your brain makes you feel bad, so you try to escape the harm to feel better again. That is, by definition, pain. Or at least a pain equivalent. An unpleasant experience. Occam's razor tells us that the most simple explanation is usually the correct one. And so, although we could come up with an idea where damage is in some way pleasant to Minecraft creatures, and their fleeing is due to a desire to avoid addiction, I think we can all agree that the most likely explanation is that it's an unpleasant experience. As parts of Minecraft are based on the real world, this becomes even more likely. So, okay, cows and pigs feel pain, but how do we know if slimes do? Slimes don't run when they're damaged. How can we know that anything else in Minecraft feels pain? Well, for this we can look at the player. The player feels pain too. We know this because of the screen tilt that happens any time you take damage. When taking damage from, say, a zombie bashing its arms against you, this could be explained away as a movement forced by an outside source. But the screen tilt still happens when the player's on fire. There is nothing physically moving you in that case. Your screen is tilting because you're flinching in response to the pain. And you could argue that something similar is happening with mobs grunting any time they're damaged. I suggest that pain can be identified as the red flash that appears whenever a player or mob takes damage. When an entity dies and it stays completely red, that's the nervous system sending a continuous siren of pain before shutting down completely. You might suggest that the red flashes are not indicative of pain, but rather of physical damage to the body, but I would counter this with the example of drowning. When drowning, players and mobs flash red, even though their body is physically unharmed. This is from the pain. Slimes also flash red from taking damage, so we know that slimes are capable of feeling pain. And since we know that slimes replicate their organs when split apart by looking at the eyes and mouths of each size of slime, we can safely assume that they still feel pain in slime ball form, given that they do in their mobile forms. Okay, so we've established that there is nothing disproving slime balls as being sentient, from experience drops to lacking self-propulsion to being able to enter the player's inventory. We've established that there is probable cause to assume that each division of slime creates its own nervous system and brain, and therefore that it should be assumed slime balls act the same way as all previous slime divisions, unless disproven. We've established that pain is canon to Minecraft, and that slimes are creatures capable of feeling pain. Now we finally come to the final question. Is it immoral to pack nine of these living, feeling, distinctly conscious creatures together into a slime block, and to make a bouncy castle where you jump up and down on them. Is it immoral to stick one of these little fellas onto the end of a piston and mash them against blocks, when we already know that slimes take painful suffocation damage? Yeah, it's pretty messed up. 